Hendricks march to the World Championship in TNT Monster Truck Racing. My colleague Chris Chapman's playing with some video equipment right now. Chris, do you know what you're doing? Scott, no, actually I don't. But TNT Motorsports knows what they're doing here in this editing suite, as in 1989 alone, more than 1,000 commercial spots were produced right here in this editing suite. Some of the great action footage that goes into those commercials is part of our show today. Scary flips by USA One and The Equalizer in Flint, Michigan, and then the culmination of the points race indoors in Atlanta, Georgia, and right here in Louisville. Also, the national champion in TNT All-American Pulling Series modified tractor action will be determined today and you will not believe the finish to this one. And unless you saw it earlier on Tough Tracks, you're not going to believe the flip USA one take in Flint, Michigan. Here's how Army Armstrong and I call the quarterfinal race that involved Rod Lipsow and USA one. But as Rod knows, one of the neat things in this sport is you run indoor, you run outdoor, and Rod has looked awfully good outdoors. Here he is again. Lipsow wins it. Look out, he's gone over again. Rod Lipsow has flipped it several times. And now Army has taken off down there and several other track officials are headed down to USA 1. A terrible flip as Rod spun and hit the asphalt several times. Several people getting him out. Litzow looks a little bit shaky right now as Army has him and a, and a couple of other drivers. There's Mike Wine, Marvin Smith, there's Everett Jasmine, the team owner. And as you can see, a great deal of concern here in Flint, Michigan. The damage telling the story on Rod Litzow's USA 1 as he took a tremendous ride. Litzow has flipped this thing on several occasions, but I don't know if he's ever flipped it any more violently than that. Well, right now, I think people are just trying to talk to Rod and, and make sure he's all right. And there's Alan Goss, who, who heads the competition and for TNT. And I think he's, I think he's calling for, he may, he's either calling for an ambulance or, or some other help. Yeah, I believe they're calling for an ambulance, and now the loader will pull USA 1 back up and over. Yeah, yeah, Scott, what's happening down here? The EMTs have just been asked to come over. That was a very violent flip. It was a sprint car type flip. It was a snap roll. And he, he's, he's in the hurt right now, believe me. He's having a whole lot of trouble standing up. The drivers are down here. We'll get back to you. Well, Army, let me, everybody's got him under control there. Now they're going to take Rod and put him in the ambulance. And, and I guess the question is, as we watch the flip again, what was Rod saying? What was it like when you got to it? Well, when I went over to him, he had already unbuckled. He was trying to stand up. The truck was laying on its side. But I believe he was in the shock because his knees, you could see his knees starting to go away from him. I just reached in and said, grab a hold of my neck. I'll pull you out of here. That's exactly what he did. When we did get him on his feet, he was real heavy. He was really spooky. I'm, this kid is lucky after that one. What a violent flip. And the USA One truck had to sustain some damage. Army's now working his way over to get with Everett Jasmer, the truck's owner. Everett Jasmer, first things first. Is the driver okay? Rod's okay. He's just shook up. No physical damage. What about the truck? It looks like 89 just went down the tubes for you. Looks like we're making a real hard charge for the end of the season here, and uh, it really looks bad right now. I mean, that's not to say we won't be back next week, but it doesn't look real good. What goes through your mind as an owner, Everett? I know you put your heart and soul in this. You've worked so hard to get up to be that number one truck, and then it's almost like you had a monkey on your back all year long. We have had. We've had a real bad one on our back. It's been a number of things. I've got a lot of complaints about the season, but all in all, we've just had a real tough season. Uh, we've got new trucks already near, near completion. Uh, I plan on coming back and taking the championship again next year. Looks like we probably won't make it this year. Now keep in mind, that was only quarterfinal round action. The racing was fierce throughout the night as the superstars of monster truck racing battled for valuable points at the last outdoor event of the year. In the finals that night were the equalizer and a truck we hadn't seen in a monster smash for a while, the Grave Digger. It's showtime. Side by side, Flint, Michigan, the final Grave Digger against Equalizer. Grave Digger in the second set. Equalizer pulls him. It looks like he got him in the air. They hit the second set together, but Grave Digger couldn't stay with him, and David Morris wins it in the Equalizer. Morris on top again. The Equalizer continued its dominance of the TNT Monster Truck Challenge, but with lots of help from an often wounded USA 1. When we return from this commercial break, Equalizer takes a hop, skip, and a jump during the second week of racing in Flint that nearly cost him the World Championship. Tough Tracks is brought to you by Micro Machines, the number one colossally collectible vehicle in the world. If it doesn't say Micro Machines, it's not the real thing.
as promised just a moment ago, Equalizer's entire year almost went up in smoke during the second week in Flint, Michigan, and in qualifying of all places. Here's how Army Armstrong and I called this near disaster. Here he is, the rookie trying to win the national championship, the world championship of monster truck racing. We're talking about David Morris and the Equalizer out of Springfield, Tennessee. Well, the truck's unique, and the, the, the suspension on the truck is different from everybody else's. The engine location is different. Remember, this engine is beneath the driver, behind him. The engine's actually in the middle of everything you're looking at there. Plus, this youngster out of Tennessee, he just has a natural knack for driving a truck. He can actually feel it. He becomes one with the truck. And you notice this qualifying run, he really goes after it. Whoa, speaking of going after it, he's got a lot of problems now, Scott. You can see it. It just collapsed on him and over goes the points leader, David Morris and the equalizer. Look, it's a perfect example of the way it just kind of crumbled under him, Army. Well, you notice the first thing that happened was the emergency crew on the scene, they pull the kill switch and he's out. He's upset. The left front spindle seems to be the Achilles tendon of that truck. All year long, the problems have come from the left front of the truck. Isn't that the same thing that happened in Richmond, Virginia? Exactly, exactly. The steering knuckle apparently was the problem there. It just broke, collapsed on him, and indeed he went over on his side, and it appears to have happened again to David Morris. One more time, we'll get a look at it, Army. Now, you've got to remember, this is a qualifying run by the national points leader. This could be devastating for the national championship because he will get no points, no money, no nothing, just a whole lot of heartache and worry after this run. There was a big question about whether or not the Equalizer crew could find the parts to fix the truck for the final five races. And Carolina Crusher gained a bunch of points on him in Flint. In Flint, Michigan, thumbs up from the Jersey Outlaw Ford. It's showtime. Chevrolet going against Ford. Who's going into the winner's circle? Mike Wine trying to pull up his first win. Not to be the case. Gary Porter with the Carolina Crusher takes the big win in Michigan. You can hear the roar of the crowd in Flint. The Chevy fans get the win with Carolina Crusher. Army, one more time. What a finish. Gary Porter had to come from behind. And like you say, these people in Flint, Michigan, they were warmed up tonight when the Chevrolet and the Ford went to the line for the final time. That huge win for the Carolina Crusher and the status of the Equalizer gave Crusher some hope for overcoming its world championship points deficit. We'll find out if the Equalizer was fixed in time to race the following week. But right now it's time for the crunch of the week. Hold on to your seats for the amazing crunch of the week. Brought to you by Micro Machines. The number one colossally collectible vehicles in the world. If it doesn't say Micro Machines, it's not the real thing. This time around, the crunch of the week is Chicago, Illinois. April 1989, and starving Marvin Smith looks at Stalker over on its side, but able to come right back. And on the replay, you're going to see how this incredibly talented driver saves her from going over. Watch him just get on the throttle. The spinning tires actually pulled Stalker out of a near disaster in Chicago. A great piece of driving on the crunch of the week. When we return, Tim Engler tries to muscle his way to the TNT All-American Pulling Series National Championship aboard Mission Impossible. Top tracks on the TNT All-American Pulling Series wrapping up the Modified Tractors Championship in Rockford, Illinois. This was where we decided the big bucks, the $31,000 that would be paid to the TNT National Champion would be crowned after this weekend in Rockford, Illinois. Now, coming into the event, two days in Rockford, Tim Engler and Mission Impossible with the lead, but not an insurmountable lead over Mike Piper and Just Add Dirt. Dave Walsh and the Irish Challenger sitting in good shape in third. John Heilman fourth, Cracklin Rose fifth. Rounding out the top 10, Fred Freeman's Mean Miss Treater still alive. Sudden Thunder, the Virginia Farmer, Dollar Devil, and Sassy Massey rounding out that top 10. And as it was in the two-wheel drive and the four-wheel drive tractors you saw earlier here on Tough Tracks, you had to get in the top five of the season points to claim part of the big bucks on the line for the TNT All-American Pulling Series in the 1989 championship chase. Here's Dave Walsh and the Irish Challenger. Uh, we're going to look right now at highlights from the first night of the competition in Rockford, Illinois, and Walsh and the Irish Challenger won everybody had to look at. Here's the pull from Dave Walsh.
a strong pull, a solid pull, the distance for the Irish challenger, 288.78. So now the distance is on the line, and the bad dogs coming up know what they have to go after. Mike Piper just adds dirt. Second in the points. You saw them how they were coming into the first night a moment ago. So this was a, an extremely critical pull for Mike Piper and just add dirt. He knew he had to have a good one. He knew he had to beat Walsh, and he knew he had to put something down that Tim Engler would have a hard time beating later on. And he does just that. We're going to watch Mike Piper with a very important run on the season points chase in just add dirt. The green flag out. Here's Mike Piper. When he needed it most, Mike Piper grabs the lead at Rockford, Illinois, night number one, just at dirt with the lead distance. And that meant Tim Engler, at Mission Impossible, knew what he had to do. He had to get past the 291 mark if he was going to pad his lead. If he came up short, Mike Piper would close the gap. Engler, one of the greats in the sport, Mission Impossible, one of the best known tractors in all of motorsports today. Tim Engler, did he have enough? We're about to find out. Now, keep in mind, Tim is the last hook on a track that is very loose and sandy. The conditions are not ideal for Tim Engler and the Mission Impossible. So far, he's been up to the challenge, and let's watch him right now. He's not gonna get close. 257.58. As we told you, there was not an ideal track condition for Tim Engler. Mike Goss is going to talk to him about that well, one. I'll be honest with you. We're getting close to the end of the point here. Uh, it's going to end right here tomorrow. And we just put all the way we had on the front, tried to make a conservative run. And the starting line was really going away. And it's one of them things when you run last in a class with this kind of horsepower in front of you, you kind of take whatever you can get to salvage out of it. So we didn't break anything. And we're just thankful everything's still one piece. And, we didn't end up all that bad. Barring, you know, a catastrophe in your last hook, you're going to win the points. A lot of good tractors running against you. You've got to be happy about it. Well, you know, I think we built uh, six out of the eight that ran tonight. And, uh, tomorrow night it's going to be real close in the points. If we don't do pretty good, why well, then we're in trouble. Tim Engler hit it right on the head. There you can see it. His lead over Mike Piper and just add dirt 55 points going into the final hook of the TNT All-American Pulling Series. Dave lost a solid third in the Irish Challenger. And remember, it's the top five that's going to grab the big bucks. But what everybody wants is the championship. And that's where Tim Engler and Mike Piper are going to decide it. Coming into the final event, Mike Piper and Just Add Dirt has to finish six places in front of Tim Engler and Mission Impossible to win it. And believe it or not, Engler is again the last hook on a very loose track. Lots and lots of pressure. Mike Goss talked to Mike Piper about the pressure and going after the championship. Mike, one last hook left in the points race. I mean, it would take an act of God to, for you to win this thing. Well, I think he's been on my side this year just a little bit. Mother Nature has been. Mother Nature worked against me a little bit up at Conicook. Uh, we didn't get to make a run. Uh, the points are going to go down to the wire again. I've been a gaining. Not gaining fast enough, but all we can do is be prepared for the situation that's going to arise out here tonight. And uh, with a little luck and a little help, uh, we still got a good shot at it, you know. And the reason why we're still working out here, and we're not going to give up. Now, you're the first hook. Mission Impossible is the last hook. Explain to us what that means on a, on a track like we've got here. Well, the track conditions really favor me. Uh, the track is not going back as far as the composition of the track for the other pullers. Uh, number one hook is a good hook to be on this track, or second. But when your last hook and uh, the tire speed that we turn and the, the holes that we dig and uh, the power that we're generating, it, it just tears the track up so often that there's not much left when, when you're late in the class. Mike also spent time with Tim Engler. Engler is very aware that everything he's worked so hard for this summer could disappear tonight. Well, we're going to try to go out and be a little conservative and just try to make a good, respectful run and keep it between the white lines and not have the tractor do anything crazy like it's made a, a few runs this year. Basically, all we got to do is end up in the top five or sixth. I think we can be as low as sixth to, to win it tonight. 
it's been a, a great point season all year long. We've run against some of the very best competition in the whole United States, and I think that TNT and Redman uh, have had a super series this summer for all of the pullers, whether it be in the tractor class or the truck classes, and I'm just glad to be able to be a part of it. I think competition was the key word there for you. I, I know you love it and you thrive on it, and obviously going against the best has made a difference for you. It really has. I want to run against where the best ones are, and we've tried to do that in years past, and this year this was a circuit we needed to run, and I really felt like that, uh, you know, it was uh, a great challenge to come out and run with this circuit this year, and it definitely has. Anytime you come down to the last actual class and try to settle a points title, you know the competition has been very strong, and I think uh, any one of, uh, well, I guess the top two are the only two that's really got a shot at winning tonight, but it, uh, it's the top five or top seven guys actually have been extremely close all year long and it, uh, it's really been a, a good feeling to run with that kind of group of guys. Later on, we'll see if it's a mission impossible for Mike Piper and Just Add Dirt to catch Tim Angler. We'll be right back. the TNT Monster Truck Challenge next took us indoors to the fabulous Omni in Atlanta, Georgia for a short, quick racetrack. Remember Equalizer's rollover and flint? Well, David Morris found the parts to fix the truck. And on the first day of racing, the number one truck in the land hooked up with number two, Carolina Crusher, in the semifinals. Here's how we saw it. The world championship points leader, the Equalizer, the man who's trying to catch him, Gary Porter's Carolina Crusher. A critical race in the battle for the world title. what he has to do, Scott. He puts away the equalizer. Gary Porter gets the job done, and Carolina Crusher has put away the equalizer. Porter goes into the final. Carolina Crusher for the second week in a row gained points on the equalizer, but it could have been worse for the equalizer. That's because Carolina Crusher met King Crunch in the final. At the starting line, there's the green light. King Crunch, Carolina Crusher, it's still time. Texas on Carolina. Man, he almost dug that nose right down into that last car. There he comes out. The winner, Scott Stevens and King Crunch. We're going to get another look at an outstanding side-by-side -side matchup. And boy, you know how great he feels up from Texas. Not only did he get the win in the Omni, he beat all the bad dogs to do it. He knocked Rod Litch out, and then he put Gary Porter away. There's Scott with his son as he gets the victory. But if you know David Morris, you know that the equalizer does not stay down for long. On the next day of racing in Atlanta, the semifinals included a race between last week's winner, Scott Stevens and King Crunch, and the man bound and determined to win the world championship, David Morris and the Equalizer. Here's how Army and I saw that matchup in the Omni. Hey, look who's coming out now. A couple of T-trucks, both of them Chevrolets, one from Texas, one from Tennessee. Last week's winner on the far side going against your current national points champion. Scott, what does it look like from your angle? Tennessee's Equalizer, David Morris, against the Texas King Crunch. Oh, my. Another close one, Scott. Boy, too, under six second runs this evening. Too close to call as they cross together at that finish line. Again, the finish line is midway through that final car. And right now we're waiting on the video timer. And there you see it by about a half a wheel. Equalizer gets the victory. David Morris puts away last week's winner, Scott Stevens and King Crunch. The monster smash that night included a familiar face, David Morris and the Equalizer, against an up-and-comer, Mike Wine and the Jersey Outlaw. Wine was a force at the end of 1989. It's showtime! Chevrolet going against Morris! Chevrolet, look at the kid out of Tennessee, another win! David Morris and the Equalizer takes the victory over Mike Wine and the Jersey Outlaw, so the Chevrolet the Ford, but more importantly for David Morris, he wouldn't have cared what make you put out beside him. This is another key victory on what he hopes is a march to the World Championship of Monster Truck Racing.
on the third and final day of racing in the Omni, King Crunch made it to the finals, but struggled to get the truck ready to run. If there was one flaw in this exciting new truck, it was the drive line. Slowly but surely, Stevens worked out the kinks, but on this day in Atlanta, he came to the line with rear-wheel drive only, putting him at a huge disadvantage against David Morris and the equalizer. Now, at this point in the season, Morris had only to survive to win the world championship. Here's a look at that monster smash final. Tightening up. Now, the word is only rear-wheel drive for King Crunch. So, equalizer with a big advantage. They're ready to go. GMC Chevrolet, Texas against Tennessee. The old veteran in King Crunch against the rookie national points leader, Scott Stevens, I guarantee you. A valiant effort by the veteran Scott Stevens. When we come back, the modified tractor champion on the TNT All-American Pulling Series is decided in Rockford, Illinois. Wait till you see how this one ends. This is what it's all about in tractor pulling. The big boys, the modified tractors, pulling for the big bucks on the TNT All-American Pulling Series. We're in Rockford, Illinois, at Rockford Speedway. Mike Piper just adds dirt. He needs to win here to have a chance to win the national championship. And he's looking good. Oh, he's out of here with plenty to spare. What a pull for Mike Piper and just adds dirt. And remember, Jim Engler, Mission Impossible, will pull last. This crack will surely go away. Mike Piper took advantage, doing what he had to do. Hey, the champion gets a check for more than $30,000 as the national champion, and Mike Piper wants his name on that line. Here comes Dave Walton, the Irish challenger. Dave Walsh is out of there with plenty to spare. A full pull for Walsh. John Powell will be up next. We'll see if the track is going to keep holding this horsepower or if it's going to start going away quickly. John Powell, there he is. Cracklin Rose ready to go. And you know he's got to take it out to get in the pull-off because he's battling for a spot in that top five. As we have been telling you, that's where they paid the big bucks on the TNT All-American Pulling Series. Not bad, but not enough. 293.51 for John Powell out of Apex, North Carolina. So Walsh and Piper remain in the pull-off, and Fred Freeman, who's been trying to crack the top five, out of Waysville, Indiana, brings out the mean mistreater. Not gonna make it. 274.07, so Fred Freeman comes up well short. Now, a little bit later, Tim Engler, needing to make the pull-off, will try to guarantee himself the TNT All-American Pulling Championship. The TNT Monster Truck Challenge came to Louisville, Kentucky's Freedom Hall to crown the world champion. David Morris and the Equalizer entered with a strong lead over Gary Porter in the Carolina Crusher. And in two nights of racing, you got everything you could want in incredible monster truck racing action. And Morris was up to the challenge. Crusher and Gary Porter had a chance to go after him, head to head in Louisville at Freedom Hall. They would meet side by side, the fans in Freedom Hall on their feet as Crusher tried to take the title away from David Morris and the rookie, the Equalizer. Carolina Crusher pulls to the line and here they go. Gary Porter needs this win desperately. Morris can just about wrap up the world title. won the world championship in Louisville's Freedom Hall on that run. David Morris gets the win. All he has to do is survive the final night. David Morris, 
it could be a, a beautiful ending to a beautiful year here, but even though you're a rookie, you seem to be taking all this in, in great stride. Yeah, um, Gary Cook, the owner of Monster Truck, uh, we come in this this last point race here, and uh, he said to go for it, so that's what I'm doing. Well, we've been talking about Gary all year long. I know he's done a heck of a job, but there's another guy involved in his organization named Ray Thomas. He really helped a lot, doesn't he? Uh, Ray Thomas, he's a super nice guy. He, uh, he's helped us uh, on a lot of steel fabrication in this truck, a lot. Uh, congratulations, you're looking awfully good. Thanks, Army. So one race was left, Freedom Hall, Louisville, Kentucky. All David Morris and the Equalizer had to do was win a first round matchup, and it mattered not what the Carolina Crusher would do, Porter could not catch Morris and the Equalizer. The best in the world, the superstars of monster truck racing in front of a packed house of very appreciative crowd at Freedom Hall in Louisville, Kentucky. And what they would get to see was the equalizer match up head to head again with Carolina Crusher. Now this one was purely for pride. Gary Porter knows mathematics. And after winning the first round, Morris had the championship wrapped up. But here in the quarterfinals, Porter head to head would love to be able to show David Morris just one time. Hey, big fella, I got you the last time we met. But the equalizer was having none of it. Side by side, one more time, these two fierce rivals did battle. Let's watch it side by side. Equalizer and Carolina Crusher just for pride. Finishing the year on a hot streak. David Morris and the Equalizer made one more exclamation point to Gary Porter. He made it side by side and head to head, beating him in the quarterfinals on the final event of the year. Scott Stevens and King Crunch would be the man to challenge David Morris and the Equalizer for supremacy in the final event of the year. The championship was Morris's, but King Crunch was trying to battle for a higher spot in the top 10 in points. And both of these guys were trying to do a little psych job on the other guy, setting up 1990. Ending it on a roll, going out as you want to, winning the championship, flying to it. You know, Rusty Wallace talked about wheels on fire on the final turn to win the NASCAR championship. Well, that's exactly what David Morris did in Louisville. Wheels on fire, letting it all hang out right to the end and dominating the competition the final weeks of the season. David Morris, in style, wins the world championship on the TNT Monster Truck Challenge. David Morris, one more run is going to be the perfect ending to a perfect year. That's what the possibilities are right now but with you and Ray Thomas and Gary Cook in a national championship. Yeah, if uh, our truck holds together like I, I think it will, uh, hopefully we're going to go out of this thing with big victory. Big time. You're feeling your Finally starting to lose it up. I think you realize you're going to be the national champion. Yeah, I may even put that flag on here afterwards. David Morris, of course, refused over the final weeks of the season to carry the silver flag. We hand the silver flag week to week to the winner on Tough Track. Morris determined late in the year that the thing was a jinx and he wouldn't carry it over the final event, but he would indeed, we will touch it again after this one more run. One more time, the last event of the year for the World Points Championship. He already had it wrapped up, but what you want a perfect end to a perfect season, and he could get it if he could beat the Jersey Outlaw in the Monster Smash Final. Outlaw and Mike Wine lining up to do battle with David Morris and the Equalizer, the classic Ford versus Chevrolet matchup. But this time, it was the Chevy of the Equalizer that had what it took. Here they are. David Morris wins the world championship and closes with a flourish, knocking out the competition at Louisville Freedom Hall. The sold-out crowd stood and cheered. The new world champion, the new king of the monster trucks, David Morris and the Equalizer. 
big hug from his wife, Nancy, as David Morris in his rookie season does it. But hey, you want to talk about 1990, you got to like the equalizer, but you also got to watch out for that guy, Mike Wines, the Jersey outlaw. No question about it. He is going to lead the Ford contingent in the 1990. Well, Mike, you said you had the odds exactly like you wanted him. You finally got him down one-on-one. -on -one. I believe the nation may have a new favorite Ford, and I think it's you, son, with this Jersey outlaw. And believe it or not, this truck's a dinosaur. It's three and a half years old. I had to run against these guys that just came out this year. They didn't run away from me that far. I did what I wanted to do. I beat Digger. Next year, I'm going after the equalizer. Okay, now, am I listening to cockiness or confidence? You listen to confidence because I'm coming out with a new truck. Nick Rossi, my owner, uh, Triangle Spring Works out of Pensacola, New Jersey. They already have a truck, and he just gave it to me as a present for next year. But the world champion of the TNT Monster Truck Challenge in 1989, David Morris, Gary Cook, driver and owner of the Equalizer. Well, ladies and gentlemen, kind of a unique situation here. We've been teasing him all year long. He's superstitious, would not carry the flag, but you get to keep it the longest of anybody. You get to keep it till next year. That's a great feeling. Um, I'm glad to have his flag now. <laughs> I didn't want it at first, but I'm, I've got it now, and I hope we can keep it. This has kind of been, a, it hadn't kind of been, it's really been a Cinderella story. We told the people about this time last year, you'd never driven a truck, you've gotten married, you're starting a family, you're a national champion, teamed up with Gary Cook. It's almost like, can you do anything wrong? It seems to have been a beautiful year for you. Yeah, it has. We've, we've had a few ups and downs, but uh, as far as everything working pretty good, uh, Gary, he's kept a truck in great working condition, and I've been trying to drive it the best I can, and we did it. Well, 1989 was your year. Congratulations. You've done a fine job. Thank you. One champion crowned. We're about to crown the final TNT champion now of 1989, and it comes in the modified tractor pulling class. We'll be right back with the exciting finish to that one from Rockford, Illinois. As this. The big tractors, they hook all those engines, all that power, and they pull the sled on the TNT All American Pulling Series for the Big Buck. The modified tractors crowning the national champ in Rockford, Illinois. John Heilman, Levi Garrett will try to join a pull off that already includes Mike Piper's Just Add Dirt and Dave Walsh's Irish Challenger. Heilman, Levi Garrett, one of the best in the business. Can he force a third man in the pull-off? Close, but not quite enough. John Heilman, 294.68. And as we talked about earlier in the program, we may be seeing this track at Rockford, this very sandy, loose track, start to go away for the competitors. The guys who were up early have the advantage. Let's see what John Carlton and the Virginia Farmer can do. Didn't get there, and again, it does look like the track is going away. The Virginia Farmer at 284 and change. Here it is. Tim Angler, Mission Impossible. Now, we talked about it earlier. He has got to get in a pull off if he wants to guarantee himself of the national championship right here. If not, it could be trouble for Angler. Earlier in the program, we showed you the first night with Angler hooking last, how the track went away from him, how he was unable to gain points, and he lost points to Mike Piper and just add dirt. Piper's already in the pull-off. Angler needs to join him. Let's watch it. Here he goes. Oh, no. Terrible problems for Tim Angler. You saw it. He just completely went out of it. 259.64. He's not even close. He's going to be way back in the pack. Well, let's find out what happened with Mike Goss. When I backed out of the throttle and, and kind of hit the front end, hit the ground, why, it just basically threw my hand right off the throttle and just one of them things. It wasn't my year, I guess. I don't know. Mike wins it. He deserves it. And if I end up second, I guess the good Lord meant for me to be second. So that's, that's the way I'm going to take it. You know, I'm not going to be a sore loser. Yeah. Mike, 
Goss talking with Tim Engler, and this is Mike Piper about to come out. Now, this is very simple, fans. If just Ed Dirt wins this pull-up, he'll win the national championship and the big buck. If the Irish challenger wins it, Tim Engler and Mission Impossible will be the national champion. Here comes Piper's pull. A lot of weight added to the sled. That's a good looking pull. 259.86. Mike Piper has laid down a shot. Mike, I'm sure stranger things have happened. I don't think you expected that out of Tim Engler tonight, though. God, no. I I thought Tim would drive real conservative, and, and I think the track just kind of fooled him and got in trouble, and I never thought it would ever come down to to this really with another competitor other than you know Tim and I really battling out and I wish Walsh all the luck but I hope he don't do it this, this is a great thing for me if it don't happen you hear the thoughts from Mike Piper what he's feeling but there's nothing he can do Piper's had a great great two days in Rockford Illinois he's done everything he can do to try and win this championship but it's up to Dave Walsh and the Irish challenger Dave Walsh Pulling for pride, pulling for the win. If he goes past that 259 mark, it'll give the national title to Tim Ingram. Let's watch him. Let's see if he can do it. It looks good. He's done it. He went past the 259 mark. 282.86. Dave Walsh in the Irish Challenger. You can see the look on Mike Piper's face. He knows he's beat. The pull of Walsh gives the national championship to Tim Engler and Mission Impossible. What drama in Rockford, Illinois. What a way to wrestle the championship. And I'll tell you, Engler's going to have a big handshake for Dave Walsh, who helped him out. Right now, Mike Goss is going to go over and talk to Dave Walsh. You turned out to be a spoiler tonight. Well, I heard that. It was up to me. If I won, if I won, Tim Engler won the points, and if I got second, and Mike Piper would have won. It really didn't matter to me. I just went out there and did my best, and uh, I won, and uh, congratulations to Tim Engler, and it was a great show. You've had a pretty good year. Um, are you satisfied with it? Well, I broke down twice. You know, if I had them two breakdowns, I, I could have done a lot better. I, was, I got third place in points, probably only 30 points from the winner, but it's the way it goes. It's a hard year, and you never know what's going to happen. Dave Walsh gets it done in the Irish Challenger. Mike Piper finishes second in just add dirt. If he'd have won, he'd have won the national championship. As it is, he finishes second to Tim Engler. Mike Goss talked with Mike Piper about the success and the disappointment. Mike, talk about a swing in emotions. I mean, the, the last 10 minutes here have really been something. Well, I really can't put a grasp on it yet. Uh, uh, I think Walsh made a super, super pass. I got a little excited out there when I found out things were so close. Uh, not taking anything away from anybody, but uh, I wish Tim all the best of luck with the national title. And things just happen. Uh, we've had a lot of luck this year, and, and uh, uh, it's been good to us. I, I, I'm tickled to death to get second place behind anybody like that of that caliber. It cannot get any closer than it was. Mission Impossible Tim Engler wins it by five points over Mike Piper and just as dirt. Walsh ends up third, Heilman, and then Cracklin Rose. But you know, Tim Engler said later that he just wanted to tip his hat to Piper and to Walsh. Everybody played their cards straight up. And in the end, Tim Engler was the best man on the TNT All-American Pulling Series. The rest of the elite, the rest of the best in 1989 on the TNT All-American Pulling Series. A sensational year, and a hat off to the champion, Tim Engler and Mission Impossible. and our review of the highlights on the 1989 TNT Monster Truck Challenge. David Morris aboard a revolutionary new truck called the Equalizer became the second rookie in a row to win the world championship. Last year, it was Rod Litzow in USA 1. Now, the truck was revolutionary because of its unique coil suspension. Those coils are lighter than leak springs and also make for a smoother, faster ride. Toward the end of the year in Louisville, TNT conducted its annual award ceremony, and Chris Chapman talked with David Morris. David, what a year you had, the rookie that becomes the national champion. Can you assess the 1989 season for me? Yes, Chris, uh, 1989 
This was a brand new year for me. It was a brand new year for Monster Truck. Uh, me and uh, the owner of the Monster Truck, Gary Cook, we just teamed up. So this is all a new ball game to us. All in all, uh, we didn't know, we had no idea we would come out on top of this national championship. Uh, we knew that we would be real competitive because uh, we felt like we had a good truck to run with. But uh, come right down to the wire, we were running neck to neck with these other monster truck drivers, and we managed to pull it out. So what do you project for 1990? Are you going to be as tough? Uh, actually, I'm going to try to be tougher. Uh, we're going to try and reconstruct the, our truck and redo it to make it better. Everybody else is going to step up, and we've got to try to step up ahead of them. You can bet the trucks like Carolina Crusher, USA One, Grave Digger, and that Jersey Outlaw Ford, plus many others, are going to be ready to challenge the Equalizer in 1990. But for now, this is David Morris's moment at TNT Awards Banquet. He was voted the 1989 Driver of the Year, and it was a very fitting honor. Quite an accomplishment for a rookie. Here's what David Morris had to say that night. Oh, I'm just living it up now. I had no idea this time last year I'd be up here. Let's see, I'd like to thank Gary again for giving me the great opportunity of driving his truck and TNT Motorsports for giving us an opportunity to run with these monster truck guys. Thanks. Let's take one more look at some of the exciting action from the Equalizer in 1989. up our review of 1989 point race for the world championship on the TNT Monster Truck Challenge. It's been a heck of a year. And as we look ahead to 1990, more trucks like the world champion, David Morris's equalizer, will be in vogue. We're talking about trucks that are stronger, yet lighter. And Chris, that's going to make for faster and more competitive racing. It certainly will, Scott. And congratulations to all of our winners on the TNT All-American Pulling Series in 1989. Stars like Tommy Holman and the Saturday Night Driller in four-wheel drive, Ray Carpenter in Sundance Kid in two-wheel drive, and Tim Engler's Mission Impossible in Modified Tractors. And Scott, during the next two weeks, we're going to do something a little different here on Tough Tracks. We'll take a close look at all the interesting work done by TNT Motorsports as it stages a monster truck race. Then we devote an entire hour to the wildest monster truck in the world, the Grave Digger. Well, 1989's all on tape. Maybe we'll get it out and look at it again someday. Like I said earlier, it never gets old. But we're all ready to get back on the road for more of the best truck and tractor pulling and monster truck racing in the world. And this is the only place where you can follow the superstars in these sports. Until next week, I'm Scott Douglas. For Chris Chapman and Army Armstrong, we'll see you right here on Tough Tracks.